because we will be speaking, being inspired of the Holy Spirit, speaking, being led by the Holy Spirit, speaking the word of God then we must allow God to use us because God wants to use us. God is with us. God is in us. And God is with us. Hallelujah. All we need to do is to surrender to the Lord. And we must allow God to use us. As God uses us, as we allow God to operate through us, people will see God in our lives. Hallelujah. In summary, one can say that we need to live a surrendered life to Christ. You know, when we have surrendered our will, when we are surrendered, our actions when we have surrendered our everything to Christ and he live through you and me hallelujah and at the end of the day through our lives the Lord will be glorified the Lord will be glorified that must be what we want to see God being glorified in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to see God being glorified. Can you say Holy Spirit? Take over my life. Take over me. Control me. Lead me. Guide me. Live through me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And as we do so, the Lord will live through you and me. And at the end of the day, his name will be glorified. And you know, when the name of the Lord will be glorified, we would have succeeded before the Lord. We will be succeeded because there is nothing more than to live for God in this world. That's what the Bible says, that what will profit a man when he when he gained the whole of this world, yet for fate his soul. Because in this world, there is nothing more than to live for God. At the end of the day, that's what it is all about. This life is all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember the first day the Lord appeared to me. It was the day that I was going to preach for the first time at the hospital. And that night, I was so scared because it was also the day the devil was so real more than any other day. That the devil said that if you go and you do that assignment, I'm going to kill you. Then I was so scared of the, I was so scared. Then the Lord came and rebuked the devil, and the devil left. And I began to have a revelation why I was born. And one thing that the Lord said, you know, the Lord said that, Go, tomorrow go and preach. But no one thing. Those people you are going to pray for, they are my people and I love them. No one thing. They are my people and I love them. When the Lord said that, there are my people and I love them, you know, he only said that. And I had a big revelation. Big revelation. I begin to see the reason why I was born. I begin to see the reason why I was born. And I begin to see the reason why we are alive in this world. I saw the biggest reason that, the one of the biggest reasons why we are alive in this world 
is to meet one person, and that person is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The main reason why we are alive, all of us, is so that we can meet Jesus Christ. If any person can live this life and die without Jesus, no matter how that person was successful before people, before God, that person is a total failure. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If somebody live in this world and die without no meeting their Lord and Savior Jesus, that person, no matter how many doctorate he have, no matter how much money he had in his bank account, in her bank account, how many houses, how many cars, but if that person lived and never meet their Lord and their Savior Jesus, their life is a waste. And their life is a total failure. Then that was the biggest revelation that I've ever got in my life. That what, we are here to meet one person. And that person is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why we are alive. We are not alive to uh, really to accomplish this and that all these other things are bonuses. But the main reason we are here in this world is to meet Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior and live for him. Mm -hmm. And God showed me that that night, that in that revelation, that many people are hooked up with the things of this world and they miss the purpose of life. And because the purpose of life is Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said in the book of John 14, verse number 6. Jesus said that, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. No one. That means if anybody want to have a relationship with their Creator, God Almighty, the creator of heaven and the earth. Jesus Christ is our way. Hallelujah. That's why yesterday you heard me talking about that there are nations in this world, these nations are full of people, yet none of them is born again. Yet none of them is born again. And if they can live these lives, and die without Jesus, they will go to hell. Because the main first purpose anybody must find out in this world is to meet their, their Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Amen. That also becomes a reason why me and you, we have to speak this gospel. We have to spread this gospel. So that even one person, if one, not sometimes, not the whole town, not sometimes, not the whole world, even one person is important. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. One person needs to meet Jesus in this world. No wonder the Bible said that Jesus Christ said that there is a greatest party in heaven. Even one person repent. One person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. One person. When you, the Bible says that even when one person repent, when one person accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior, the Bible says that there is a greatest party in heaven. Greatest Amen. party. Even angels rejoice. Then... You know, that is the purpose of my life. That is the purpose of my life, to spread this gospel. To make sure that one person can hear about Jesus. Once I find out that this life is all about Jesus, I make it a point that to every day of my life, I will try, I will do my best. So that that one person can hear that there was this Savior who have come. That the Bible says that in the book of John chapter 3 verse number 16. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever will believe upon him shall be saved and have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Because God does not want anybody to die without knowing, accepting his only son. No. He doesn't want that. It's one of the painful deaths in heaven. It's one of the painful deaths. When somebody die without the Lord in heaven, God, it pains the Father when he sees that soul going to hell forever. It's one of the greatest pain the Father sees, the Father experience, is the death of a sinner. When God sees a sinner dying without Christ, it pains the Father the most. Hallelujah. Then if you love the Father, you love Jesus, you try, you help them. Because God is in heaven. Jesus Christ at the right hand of God is also in heaven. They can no longer preach this gospel of, the, of Christ. They can no longer. They are relying on me and you. They are depending on you and me to spread the gospel in this world. That's what the Bible says that in the book of Mark. Mark. If you've got a Bible, let's go there. Mark chapter 16. Pali cross katifa so telibaha. Raki bason talabahaya. Verse number 15, the Bible says, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and will be baptized will be saved. And whoever does not believe will be condemned. You know, these were the last words of Jesus. Imagine, when he have died, when he rose up from the dead, when he spent about 40 days with the disciples before he went to heaven. This was the thing that he said. He said that, oh, go ye into the world and preach this gospel. Go and tell people about me. Go and tell others about me. That's what he told them. Go and tell others so that anybody who's dead going to believe will be saved. And whoever does not believe will be condemned. I'm saying to you this, after this evening, God is relying. God is depending on you and me to preach this gospel. To spread this gospel of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. If you want to please God, if you want to please the Father, one of your greatest purpose must be to win souls. It must be to make sure people come to Christ. Like I said, for souls he died. For souls he died. He did not die for many other things. Other things are just bonuses. Like I said, one of the greatest miracles is salvation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Then that's why you are hearing somebody call for prayer. The first thing that I do, I let them accept Christ Jesus. Because, you know, salvation is eternal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. It's beyond this world. Let me tell you this. Uh, the things of this world are not eternal. They are temporary. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like let's say somebody get a job. We're not going to work for the rest of, for the whole of our life and beyond this world. No, we are working for some time just to feed ourselves, feed our family, just to have money. We are not, we are not working forever. We are working for a short time. Or let's say somebody got blessed with a car, with a private jet, with a double story. We're not going to have that... Uh, Cars forever. Even when we leave this world, we're not going to live with our cars. We're not going to live with our houses. We're not going to live with our money. But salvation will make you and will make somebody to go to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Salvation is beyond this world. Salvation is beyond the material things of this world. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Salvation is beyond. Makratofa sontala bazontarabaya. Lakatarabayande. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what the Bible says that in the book of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4. Verse number 18. The Bible reads as follows. So we fix our eyes on not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Hallelujah. What is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is it's eternal. What is seen is what? The things, everything that we see in this world is temporary. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. It is temporary. But what is unseen? Salvation. Jesus, God Almighty, heaven is eternal. Then let us fix our eyes on what is unseen. What is eternal? And make sure that we go and spread this gospel with the whole of our heart. You know, Amen. when let me tell you this. When you begin to care about the gospel, oh, you begin also begin to be the focus of heaven. God begin to focus on you. If you want heaven to begin to focus on you, heaven to begin to talk about you, oh, begin to care about what God cares about. And more than anything else, what he cares about is souls. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Jesus Christ came and he died for souls. He died for souls. That's what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that whoever will believe upon him shall be saved. He came here for souls. Then when we begin to tell others about him. When we begin to make sure we bring others to Christ. And let them know about Jesus. Wow. You are fulfilling an internal purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Then that's why I'm saying that one of my greatest purpose is to win souls. I have dedicated my life to win souls more than ever more. I want to live to see people receiving Christ. I, will, I want people to go to heaven. Hallelujah. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Help me to win souls. For Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Then that must be the purpose of our lives. Where we say that we have made up our mind also to live for Christ. Then that's what happened to me. When I had that vision, that's what changed my, my life completely. When the Lord put it to me that the main reason why we are alive is for Jesus, I didn't think so. Before, before I thought it's all about the things of this world. It's all about competition that we compete that I want to have a better house. I want to have a better this. I want to have a better that. I thought it was all about competition. I thought I want to make it and all that. But after that time, my life changed completely. From that time, what I cared about the most was telling other people about Jesus. It was so that the world may know that Jesus Christ is all the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah! Amen. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. 
reveal Jesus in us. Reveal Jesus through our lives. In the name of Jesus. Until we reach the level when somebody looks at you must see Jesus. When somebody looks at your life, must see Jesus. Must see Jesus today. How? Through you. When he has taken over you. When he has taken over your life. When he has taken over the way you talk. When he has taken over the way you laugh. When he has taken over the way you act. And everything is all about him. Even when you get money, that money is all about him. Wow! When you have reached that kind of level, even in heaven, wow! God, you know, your life begins to attract the Father in such a way that He's always watching you. Your life begins to attract the angel in such a way that He's always watching you because you are portraying Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I say, may God give us the grace to live for Jesus in Jesus' name. Anything that has been limiting us to live for God, let it be broken in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, we must live for Christ until he overtake he overtakes your life are you hear what i'm saying Amen. let him over let him take over your life in every sector let him let him take it over let it be all, all about him and your life will be like a like a fragrance unto the lord that's what the bible says that in the book of romans chapter 12 let us go to the book of romans chapter 12 Chapter 12, verse number 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Apostle Paul here, God has revealed this to Apostle Paul saying that we must offer our lives, our bodies, our life, as a living sacrifice. We must be a living sacrifice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. A sacrifice that God enjoys. Wow. Let me tell you this. Listen to this one very carefully. In the Old Testament, the priest of the Old Testament... They were told that they must offer burning incense every morning and every evening. They used to burn incense, offer sacrifices morning and evening unto the Lord to keep the glory and the presence of God there. But us, we are the priests of the New Testament. Hallelujah. Then through our lives, mm -hmm. huh, we must be offering sacrifices. One of the sacrifices must be your life. Hallelujah. Amen. It must be your life. That God just watches, watches over you and he enjoys your life. Mm -hmm. He must watch. Hey, say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Qualify me. Qualify me. Sanctify me. Make me live a life that pleases God. Help me to live a life that glorifies God. Hallelujah. You know, that was how Job lived. The Bible said that this man, he was upright, he was blameless, in such a way he attracted the glory of the Lord. 
that the God begin to brag about Job. He bragged. Are you hear what I'm saying? He bragged and said that, oh, one day he had nothing to talk about in heaven except Job. When the devil appeared with other angels, God did not talk, tell him, oh, what were you doing? After when he asked, what were you doing? He said, ah, have you considered my servant Job? Have you seen Job? This man, I enjoy his life. This man, he's doing what I want. This man is on point. I'm saying that in 2020, in your family, in your village, in your country, you must be some, we are going to be somebody who God is proud about in Jesus' name. In that company, in that working place, that I can see the light shining through our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Where people, you know, hey, they will be busy as the business. Hey, people, I can see people busy doing their daily jobs and they begin to sense the presence of God. They wonder why God is here. It's not even Sunday. They wonder why God is here. It's not even Sunday. Can to you, the way you are living, our life has begin what? It begin to become a, what? A living sacrifice. Amen. The glory of the Lord appear. It's now appearing at the walking place. I can see somebody in the car. Somebody. This person in the road. The people, they wonder why God is appearing in the road. Can't it, there is somebody who's living for God in this, driving this car, living in the presence of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They will wonder, why are the angels? An angel will just appear in your working place. An angel will just appear in the road. An angel will just appear in the shopping center. Hey, this is deep. And the people will wonder, why an angel here? Can't it, there is somebody who is living for God. There is somebody who is living in the presence of the living God. And I decree and I declare that person will be me and you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. When we are what? We are a living sacrifice. That means on this realm, we have sacrificed our lives. We could do more. We could do many things. But we choose to do what? To sacrifice and offer our lives and offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Say Holy Spirit. Make me a living sacrifice. Let me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, begin to pray wherever you are. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Mandala bazonda rabrojanda vazonda. Mandanda brojandanda vazondanda vazonda Mantara bazondo robo zandala bayanda Mantala pasantara bayanda Mintere bo santala bazontara ba Men tell me, Basun Taraba. Men tell me, Rosanda Raba, Sundan Daraba. Father, give us the grace to be a living sacrifice unto you, O Lord. Unto you, O Lord. Unto you, O Lord. We want to be a living sacrifice. 
Manta la basanta la basanta la bayan. Mente le bosianda. God Almighty, we want to represent your kingdom in our days. We want to represent heaven in our days. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, we have to represent Jesus in our days. We want to repre- we have to represent Jesus, the kingdom of, our, of heaven. In our families, in our days. In our countries, in our days. On these days in which people are no longer living for God. But let them be. Let you and me be a people who will represent this kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And this is the part of seeking him with all of our heart. And sooner or later you will see all the other things will be added to us as well. We don't we are not running after things. We are running after God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say I am after God. I am after Jesus. I am after Jesus. Yes. Yes. Receive the grace to be after Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive the grace to live for God in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace to dominate in every sector of our life in Jesus' name. And everything that you need, let it be provided in Jesus' name. May we never ever struggle in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, say, raise up your right and say, every power. Every spirit, every demon, in my path, in my day, in my life, in my family, in my career, in my anything. Catch fire, 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 catch fire. I command them. Come on. Ah. 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 In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Receive every blessing you want wherever you are. Receive every answer you want in the name of Jesus. La katopa satarabayadu. Liadurubu siandarabayadi. To that person looking for a job, receive your job. Receive your peace. Let there be peace in that house. Peace and favor in your life. Success in your life. Prosperity in your life. Healing, protection, deliverance, wisdom. Wisdom from above. Every project that was delaying, I command it to begin to move. I command it to begin to be fulfilled. Let it be fulfilled. Let it be fulfilled. I can see people coming from all over to help us. To help you. As you are walking for the Lord. 
as you are walking for the Lord, as you are walking for the Lord, as you are walking for the Lord. Every answer that you have been waking for, waiting for, receive it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I say congratulations. 